Welcome back Copic fans and it is Michelle Houghton with Copic in the craft room. I am truly just doing some coloring for fun today. Do you ever have a day that you really just want to color? It has nothing to do with necessarily creating a card um, or a specific craft. You just you want to spend some time coloring and that is what I'm up to today. This is the stamp I'm using today is from Stampendous and it is this group of horses. Um, the artist is Laurel Birch and I am a huge fan of her artwork. I had been before um, this past year and when I saw that Stampendous was creating a line of stamps by her, I was just pretty excited. So I did buy a group of them and this is one of them that has been waiting to be colored. So I've got it stamped up and I have used paper that is from, we have a brand new um, series of sketchbooks coming out from Imagination International. And this is the paper that they're putting in it. It's a little bit lighter than the Express Blend It card that I use, Express It blending card that I usually use. It is a tiny bit off white um, as you go in and can see kind of the difference between the, the paper that I'm working on top of but it works beautifully for Copic um, and you're gonna be able to buy in some different sketchbook sizes here eventually, but they're making those at Imagination International and so a high quality product, works great with our markers and that's really fun. But this is a scrap paper from that, um, one of those sketchbooks and so I've got my stamp all stamped up, Memento Ink, um, the sketchbook paper from Imagination International and when those come out and are ready to go, I'm sure I will have more detailed information for you guys on those. So I truly have picked, um, I kind of did a little game plan or map for myself of how I wanted to do those. I'll have to take a quick stop and figure out if I'm going to add some background color just to the front of that um, front horse. And I probably will. I'm not sure what that will look like yet, but we'll figure something out. But um, this is as much of a game plan as I have. So. I've got some color groups down, I've got four sets of markers in front of me, and I'm really just playing today. So I will zoom in and we will get started. So I'm going to use a group of E's and YR's on the first horse. I'm starting with E50 and coloring in the body of the horse. I'm not totally sure yet what I'm going to do with all the details that the artist has included. E53 or E53 sorry, is coming in for the first layer of shading and E23 is going to be my darkest shadow areas. E53 again to blend that first layer back in. So I'm using some circles and some flicks, softening those edges and then E50 to blend that last layer in. Next, I'm going to go in with my E53 and I'm coloring in those stripes and then E23 to add a little bit of depth to those stripes along the horse's face and neck and then E53 on the hair to the front of its face and E50 to the rest of the mane on this particular horse. And then for this layer, I'm really just coloring in those stripes. So E53 for a few stripes. I'm trying to be random, not every other one. E23 for a few stripes. Obviously that gives it that nice deep contrast and a darker color. Again, sometimes I'm skipping one, sometimes two. YR14 is coming in next and that's gonna add a little bit of brightness to this image. So I've added that into some of the stripes. And then I've got a YR12 and YR24 on the eye. I realized the front of the mane didn't get done so I'm adding some touches of color there as well. I'm gonna do a second horse with the same coloring. I'm starting with that E50 and then I'm adding shading with my E53. I'm flicking that color from the bottom edge up so it's already doing some of the blending for, for me. E23 is next into those deepest shadow areas. E53 to start blending that color back in and then E50 to soften all the way into that lightest layer. E53 on those stripes again and doing most of the um, main that I can see. E23. And 
and I'm adding some dots with that E23 and I'm going back with YR27, dotting with E53 to add some texture on that horse. E23 and E74 are going to be the eye color on that one. On my next one, I'm using a whole different group of colors. I'm starting with BV20 to base the body. And I get the head, and I go ahead and go all the way down and get the neck as well. And then BV23 is my next layer of shading here. My mid-tone. Again, flicking this color on so it starts to soften at those edges already. BV25 into some of those deeper shadow areas. Blending that back with BV23, BV20, really softening that up. And this is a unique color combination in that it starts looking a little more blue as I do that layer. Tiny bit of colorless blender in the stripe to lighten it further. And then BV29 is coming with it in with some dots in those darkest areas. BV25 to soften those dots. And again, I'm dotting at this point with my marker, my brush nib. BV23, more dots. And BV20. I go over that last layer with that BV20 to soften it all back up. So it's really blended in that colorless blender on the stripe again. And then I'm filling in the mane with BV20. And I'm going to use the colorless blender to try to fade some of those stripes out so we have some variation there. It's not going to be real significant. It's just going to add a little bit of variation through those stripes in the main. Sorry, YR12 and YR27 for the eye. This, sec this horse is also going to be with that series of BVs. So we're starting with the BV20. Going in with our BV23 to find those areas that are shaded. Flicking that color in so it's softer at the edges. BV25, then softening with BV20. So I skipped. I'm working fast enough at this point that I kind of skipped my mid-tone to blend and went all the way back to my lightest color. Now I'm going in with my colorless blender and you're going to see pretty quick what's going on. I'm adding some dappling or dots with the colorless blender this time. And so on those lighter areas, you're gonna be able to see that better. I am holding the marker in place each time I do one of those dots for two or three seconds at least. So pressing it down gently, counting to two, one, two, three, and then lifting up. And I could go back and make those brighter by going back over them again. This is that BV25 again, adding some deeper shading BV20 to soften the top edge, and then BV29 comes in and really adds some punch into some of those darkest areas, softening with the BV25, adding a little more shading up around the face, and then adding some BV23 on the main area, and some BV25. Filling in the rest of the mane with a BV20, BV23 for some stripes, BV29, just those little tips, and then fading it with the BV25. We've got a YR12 and a YR27 on the eye. New horse, new colors, E70 to start. And this is going to fill in most of that horse. Again, the neck and the face. And then E71 for the first layer of shading. E74 is next. Adding some depth into those shadow areas. I'm also going around the rings that this artist likes to use on the eyes. E77 is that deepest color. So it only goes into those darkest shadow areas. And then we're going to blend back E71 and E70 to soften all those edges. Coloring in the main E70. Coming in and getting individual strands with E74. Trying to stay random still, so it's not every other one. E77 for a few here and there. 
just brief touches and hitting that stripe softening with E71 and 70. BV20 and BV25 are getting those eyes. Whole nother color for my last horse. YR31 is going to start us off. And this is kind of a butterscotchy color, I guess, is a good way to describe it. I love YR31. It's a favorite. YR12 is next. This is going to ease transition into some deeper colors. YR14 is next. You're going to see, obviously it's getting pretty bright. And then I tone it down with YR24. This one is a much more desaturated color. And then YR27 is going to be my darkest color. I'm working in some stripes in that mane. YR24 to go back and blend. YR14. And then YR31. I tried, but it didn't work. So YR12 to soften up those edges. And then the YR31 to come back in. YR27 around the one eye. And then to re-emphasize those stripes in the mane and the stripe along the neck. And then I'm grabbing some color for the sky. B39 is the first color I'm using. And it's super dark, but I want to make sure I, so I do slow down when I hit go around those edges because this is a pretty powerful color. And then a little bit of B37 to kind of soften up those outer edges. And then I use a Kirarina Wink for stars. Thank you for joining me today for a fun coloring tutorial. I really was just wanting to play with my markers today. Um, and I think that's what you saw. I forgot this little horse's eye, so I'll get those tucked in quickly. Um, I was really just playing with color and combinations, trying to get a real rich, vibrant tone on each of those animals. Um, Realism, at least where the shadows and shapes might be, but certainly not in color. Um, I added a little bit of texture with that dappling, kind of either with the colorless blender or the colors that I was using on the horses. Um, but I really enjoy just spending some time with my markers and coloring an image that I really truly love. If you've not done it yet, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Like this video, as always, ask questions. I'm listening. Lastly, join us over at Copic in the Craft Room on Facebook for loads of Copic and crafting inspiration. Thanks for joining me this week and have a happy, colorful week.